Warum? Warum? Warum ist die Banane krumm? Why, why, why is the banana bent? That's what my exasperated mother used to say after I'd asked the tenth why question in a row as a three-year-old. What she probably failed to recognize, though, is that the ability to form all these questions effortlessly, not that long after starting to speak, is a minor miracle, one we all achieve at around that age. And it's a miracle that you can now do the same thing when learning German, although I don't quite know about the effortless. But now we want to take a step further and teach you how to answer such questions in German. And it will only take the next few minutes for you to understand the how of it, and then a few more hours to be able to do it yourselves. Before we learn how to answer the question, why is the banana bent, we have to get the building blocks of sentences right and into the correct sequence. We know about the finite verb as second element rule. Ich gehe heute ins Kino. Heute gehe ich ins Kino. And we know about the frame formed by the verb phrase. Ich kann heute nicht ins Kino gehen. But are there any rules for the way we German speakers, according to Mark Twain, shovel in the rest of the sentence? You bet there are. You know enough of German grammar by now to guess that there's always a method in the madness. However strange things may seem at times, they always make sense in the end. And here things are not even that strange. On top of stating what we do, and to or for whom we do it, the accusative direct and dative indirect objects we've already learnt about, we can also say when, how and where we do something. And there you go. I've already given you the whole rule. Time, manner, place. TMP. Because that's the sequence that this additional information is normally given in. Ich fahre nach Sydney. Place. Ich fahre morgen nach Sydney. Time, place. Ich fahre morgen mit dem Zug nach Sydney. Time, manner, place. Ich fahre jede Woche allein nach Brisbane. Ich fahre am Freitag ohne meine Mutter nach Hause. If you have more than one time expression, the rule is general to specific. For example, when giving addresses in German, you give your town before the street address. Look at this sentence. Ich fahre morgen um 4 Uhr mit dem Zug nach Sydney. Morgen. General. Um 4 Uhr. Specific. Have a look at the transcript of our video scene. You'll find a lot of further examples of the TMP rule. Now let's see what happens when you start with one of the TMP elements. Very often we put the time at the beginning of the sentence. Occasionally we put manner and very occasionally place at the beginning. And if we do, it's usually for emphasis when that idea has been mentioned before. Of course, the finite verb as second element rule applies then, and we use intonation to further emphasize what we regard as important. Morgen fahre ich mit dem Zug nach Sydney. Mit dem Zug fahre ich morgen nach Sydney. Nach Sydney fahre ich morgen mit dem Zug. So why are we doing this? And why are you learning German? And why, why? Well, to answer all these why questions, you need to be able to say because. So let's have a look at what we call clauses. A clause is simply a group of words that contains its own verb. Clauses might be the biggest building blocks in a language, but they form relationships with each other much like people do. They can be associated with each other or be dependent on each other. And we have little words we call conjunctions that indicate the exact nature of these relationships. If clauses are only associated with each other, but still independent enough to stand alone, we call them independent or main clauses because they carry a complete message on their own, and they're linked by coordinating conjunctions, that is, words that bring two equal, standalone clauses together. Ich lerne Deutsch und ich will im Mai nach Deutschland fahren. And as you know, the verb is the second element in these clauses. The most important coordinating conjunctions are und, oder, aber, and den, and, or, but, and because. And no changes in word order happen in either of the independent clauses. They just have a conjunction in between them. Note that the conjunction, as the link between the sentences, 
doesn't count as the first element of the sentence it precedes. The word order, therefore, doesn't change after und, oder, aber, and den. You can basically just ignore them. Ich esse Fischsuppe. Ich trinke Rotwein. Ich esse Fischsuppe und ich trinke Rotwein. Ich esse Fischsuppe oder ich trinke Rotwein. Ich esse Fischsuppe, aber ich trinke Rotwein. Ich trinke Weißwein, denn ich esse Fischsuppe. Note that you don't need a comma when you use und and oder. If you leave out the subject of the second clause, because it's the same as the subject in the first clause, the verb stays where it was. Ich esse Fischsuppe und trinke Rotwein. The ich is implied in the second sentence and therefore continues to count as the first idea. The conjunction aber has the complementary equivalent sondern. Aber is used for but when it means however. Sondern is used when but means on the contrary. In other words, when the first sentence is negative and you want to express a mutually exclusive contrast, you have to use sondern. Let's clarify this with an example. Ich esse keine Fischsuppe, sondern... But rather, instead... Ich trinke Rotwein. In the sondern sentence, you don't have soup, but instead you have red wine. Whereas in the sentence... Ich esse Fischsuppe, aber ich trinke Rotwein. You both eat and drink. However, you have red wine, not the expected white wine with the fish. There is one last coordinating conjunction, den, because, which indicates the reason why something is done, and this reason is expressed in the form of an independent clause that can stand alone. Ich lerne Deutsch, denn ich will im Mai nach Deutschland fahren. Ich lerne Deutsch, denn ich will im Mai nach Deutschland fahren. Now, if one clause is dependent on another and can't stand alone, We call it a dependent clause, and the link word is a subordinating instead of a coordinating conjunction. The dependent clause needs the main clause to give it meaning, and the conjunction signals this pecking order. Ich lerne Deutsch, weil... Because... Ich im Mai nach Deutschland fahren will. Weil is the subordinating version of den. Can you see the difference in word order between the clauses when using den... And weil, look at the finite verb, that's the one with the endings. In the subordinate weil clause, the finite verb is kicked to the end, whereas in the den clause, it's left as the second element. Ich lerne Deutsch, denn ich will im Mai nach Deutschland fahren. Ich lerne Deutsch, weil ich im Mai nach Deutschland fahren will. This kick to the back principle applies to all dependent clauses. So the word order in a dependent clause stays the same, except that the finite verb, the one with the ending, goes to the very end, as you can see from our example clause. Ich lerne Deutsch, weil ich nach Deutschland fahren will. That will also mean that a separable prefix verb finds itself suddenly joined together again. Ich packe. Ich fahre morgen weg. Ich packe, weil ich morgen wegfahre. Although the dependent clause usually follows the main clause, this order can be reversed. If that's the case, the whole dependent clause counts as the first element and is therefore followed by the finite verb of the main clause in the second position as per usual. Weil ich morgen wegfahre, packe ich schon heute. Right. Now you'll be prepared should you ever meet a German toddler with lots of why, when or how questions. Let's now have a look at some more subordinating conjunctions. Bis. Until. Ich bleibe zu Hause, bis sie zurückkommt. I'll stay at home until she comes back. Before. Before. Ich gehe weg, bevor sie zurückkommt. I'll go away before she comes back. Da. Since, in the sense of because. Ich gehe weg, da sie zurückkommt. 
I'm going away because she's coming back. Damit. So that. Intent. Ich gehe weg, damit sie allein sein kann. I'll go away so that she can be alone. Das. That. Er sagt, dass sie zurückkommt. He says that she's coming back. So das. So that. Result. Er sagt es, so dass sie zurückkommt. He says it so that she'll come back. Falls. If. In case. Ich bleibe zu Hause, falls sie zurückkommt. I'll stay at home in case she comes back. Nachdem. After. Ich gehe weg, nachdem sie zurückkommt. I'll go away after she comes back. Ob. If. Whether. Ich weiß nicht, ob sie zurückkommt. I don't know if she's coming back. Obwohl. Although. Ich gehe weg, obwohl sie zurückkommt. I'm going away, although she's coming back. Sobald. As soon as. Ich gehe weg, sobald sie zurückkommt. I'll go away as soon as she comes back. Während. While. Ich bleibe zu Hause, während sie weg ist. I'll stay at home while she's away. Weil. Because. Ich gehe, weil sie erst morgen zurückkommt. I'm going because she's only coming back tomorrow. Wenn. If and when. Ich gehe weg, wenn sie zurückkommt. I'll go away if and when she comes back. Als is another German conjunction for English when, which is used when referring to one-time events in the past. Ich bin weggegangen, als sie zurückgekommen ist. I went away when she came back. You might still be gasping for breath after having all these conjunctions thrown at you. But relax. Of course we'll give you the opportunity not only to understand, but also to use them. And used they are, a lot, both in English and in German. As you can see from my last few sentences, which all contained conjunctions. So fasten your seatbelts. We're taking off to the land of TMP and of inter-sentence relationship.